So here's an environment animation I did. It's 240 frames long or 8 seconds at 30 FPS and it took me roughly 3.5 hours to completely render. Now here's that same animation rendered in Blender but with the help of AI. Looks identical right? And guess what? This only took me about one and a half hours to fully render. In this video, I'll explain how you can harness the power of AI to improve on your render speeds. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later. I have this environment scene in Blender and it has a lot of the typical aspects that make your renders go slowly. It's got quite a few tries, roughly 900,000. It's got a lot of animated objects, roughly 18,000. High quality textures and lighting and it also has some compositing. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a decent PC which you can check out the specs down here. But even with that, rendering a single frame for this animation took roughly 50 seconds. Meaning that the entire animation will take approximately three and a half hours to finish. That's no small amount of time for just eight seconds of animation. And you can imagine how much larger this number becomes when you render out an entire animation or even a full-fledged short film. So let's harness the power of AI to make this go a lot faster. Now, how's that possible, you say? Well, it's done with a free AI video interpolator tool called Flowframes. It's been out for some time now, but I think it deserves a little more attention because it's a major help when it comes to saving you time on your renders. And that's something I know a lot of you still have issues with seeing the reactions I got on my previous video about improving your render speed. So let's get back into Blender and specifically in the Output Properties tab. Right under your project's frame range, frame start and frame end, you'll find an option called step. This is the number of frames Blender skips forward while rendering or playing back your frames. Now that sounds a bit vague, so what does this actually mean? By default this is set to 1, meaning that Blender renders every frame, so 1, 2, 3, 4 and so forth until it reaches your frame range end. By setting the value to 2 for example, Blender will now render your frames as follows. one. 3, 5, 7. This effectively cuts your total rendered frames in half, but in a different way than just setting your project's frame range to 120 instead of 240, as the endpoint of your animation remains the same as with a step 1 render. Effectively, it just removes every in-between frame. Now, this is exactly what we want, as Flowframes has an AI algorithm that will let us interpolate these missing frames very, very quickly. Speaking about very quickly, that's what she said. <laughs> Getting a professional portfolio website these days is easier than ever with Squarespace. Not only can you create a stunning website in no time, but Squarespace also makes sure that your images look amazing on any device from the tiniest phone to the biggest monitor. So you can say goodbye to wonky pixelated photos and hello to picture perfect pages. Squarespace's intuitive design tools offer flexible layouts, custom color palettes, great looking Google and Typekit fonts, free high quality images through Unsplash and even has built-in photo editing capabilities. But wait! There's more! With Squarespace's print-on-demand feature, you can turn your creations into high-quality products without lifting a finger. Let them handle the printing and shipping so you can focus on what you do best, being a creative genius. And the best part? You can head to squarespace.com slash kaizen tutorials and use code kaizen tutorials to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A quick heads up, doing this method, you're best off rendering your animations in frames. Generally, this is the case for rendering animations, so you can just consider this a best case practice by any means for rendering. Okay, so with that said, let's set our step rate to two and render out our animation as frames. Now it's done and like expected, this took roughly 100 minutes of rendering. Now we have all of these loose frames and we need to convert them to a video with the proper FPS. To convert it, let's open up a new project inside of Blender and use Blender's default video editing template. Then in your timeline, click on add image slash sequence and select all the images you render out. Now let's make sure to set the frame range to match the amount of frames that we actually rendered, which in this case is 120. Also make sure the resolution is set to whatever you used, which in my case was 2560 times 1080. Finally, you want to set the FPS to match the stepped 
stripped-down version of your original animation. To use this project as an example, the original animation was at 30 FPS for 8 seconds or a total of 240 frames, but was cut in half using the step 2 render, meaning this video should now be 15 FPS for 8 seconds or a total of 120 frames. Make sure to change the frame rate to custom and set the FPS to this custom range of 15. Choose a save location and render out your video. Okay, so with our video rendered, let's use our magical AI tool to turn this video into a 240 frame 30 fps video in a matter of seconds. First of all, download Flow Frames, which you can do uh, via the link in the description and install it on your PC. In my case, my PC couldn't actually find the application after installing, which was a bit weird. So if this happens to you, you can find it in the following location on your PC, which I'll show on screen right here. All right, so after installing, open up the app and let it load the AI algorithm for a bit. Go to the interpolation tab and click on browse video. Choose your 15 FPS video that you just rendered and you can now choose your desired output FPS. In this case, I want 30, so times two is perfect and I want the speed to stay on normal speed, maintaining the original video speed. You can change the interpolation AI and AI model, but leaving it on default works best in my case. Depending on your GPU, you might need a different interpolation AI. Optionally, you can also change the output format, but I prefer MP4 as it works on almost any device and in any software. All set, let's hit the interpolate button and let it do its thing. For me, it finished in 39 seconds, which is absolutely crazy. So let's check out the end result. It looks amazing to me and if I put it side by side with the original 30 FPS video, I can't really tell the difference. Now this absolutely blows my mind and just shows how AI can really help us here. So can we push this even further? Well, yes. Here's a version of the animation using a step 3 render with a total render time of roughly 66 minutes and the AI interpolating two frames between every frame rendered in Blender. Again, it's crazy to me how well this works, but you can now start to see a difference with the depth of field losing a bit of quality and the planned animations looking a little bit more janky. Overall though, it's still very passable. And here's another version with an even higher step 4 render, bringing down the total render time to about 50 minutes in total. You can tell this one is starting to fall apart though, as the animations are now looking very stuttery and the depth of field transition is not good at all. So there's this point where setting the step value higher and letting flow frames interpolate more frames in between every frame starts losing quality. So for me the best gains, roughly cutting my render times in half, was with setting it to 15 FPS instead of 30 FPS and letting flow frames interpolate one frame between every frame, resulting in a nearly identical result but still saving me a bunch of time. Now there's a bunch of other use cases for flow frames as well, so you can use it to do different things with your renders. Now this is obviously similar but here's a 60 FPS video I created from the original 30 FPS. This makes it look a lot smoother and because it already has 30 frames to work with, the interpolation works even better, making the 60 FPS look perfect and buttery smooth. So if you have some old low FPS animations lying about, you can quickly spruce them up using flow frames interpolation without having to re-render anything. Another thing you could do is you could double your FPS and then play it back at the original FPS speed, meaning that you have now created a sort of slow-mo effect, effectively doubling the length of your entire animation. You could also do this partially just to create a partial slow-mo between two normal speed segments. Flow frames is also great for when you have some janky character animation just to make it look smoother and make it look better by quickly adding some more frames between every frame in your animation. So my hope for this video is that it will save you a lot of time rendering without costing you anything in how things look. But if this isn't enough for you, I have another video with the best render settings for rendering in cycles, saving you even more time. As always, a big thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel.